Hey guys, Desolate Magic here. We've got the first couple spoilers, uh, although I think they did spoil one card back in the day, or maybe just the art, I don't remember. Well, okay, more than one card, I'll show it later, but uh, to catch everybody up, full art borderless fetch lands. All right, not news, let's jump into the new spoilers. For the upcoming Infinity set that allegedly is launching in October, or as I like to call it, November with the product delays. Just an educated guess, so check this one out, Angelic Herald, you might have noticed something. It does not have a silver border, that's right. Mark said something unbelievably stupid about how he wanted to, like, remove the stigma from it and make it legal in more sets, and then... So they put an acorn on the bottom that means the exact same thing. So the acorn holofoil stamp means it's not legal in anything, and that if it doesn't have one, which about 50% of the cards in the set allegedly are going to not have one, so be legal in Commander, Vintage, and Legacy, keep that in the back of your head when you see some of these spoilers. And that's just to drive the value up, because otherwise none of the cards had any kind of persistent value the last time around with the last unset. I did enjoy, you know, Sealed and Draft or whatever else I did with it. I don't even remember, it was a while ago, but... Uh, it looks like, just breezing through these, these are like pretty competitive and not very abnormal. But, I will say, we know from the wiki page, which I'm sure was either edited by Watsi's staff, because I've had strong evidence that they do that in the past, that's all I'm going to say, or from people who went to Mark Rosewater's panel at wherever he is, and then edited it themselves, although there are citations, so you know I could do a whole research paper on this, but you know what, let's just jump in. But according to that page, there's going to be dice rolling, name and art matters, stickers, oh, we'll get to that, tickets, and attractions. Well, let's start with Angelic Herald. Hey, get it? It's like Herald, but it's spelled Herald. So it's a three-cost blue-white angel, 2-2 two -two legendary creature, angel performer. It is an acorn, AK silver-bordered card. Um, it has flying, and when it enters battlefield, you may put a name sticker on a non-land permanent you own. Each creature you control with three or more words in its name gets plus one, plus one. All I know is there's 48 different stickers, and, uh, you know what, let's just go straight to it. This is one of the sticker cards. Um, they're gonna be adhesive, so you are sticking that to your cards. Preferably the sleeves, just saying, but, uh, whatever. They did say that it's similar to that of a post-it note, so it won't damage the card, and then there's no source cited on that, so that's another Watsy staff trying to sneak this in all sly, probably. There are name stickers, three per sheet, art stickers, three per sheet, ability stickers, two per sheet, and power and toughness stickers, two per sheet. So the name is on top, Urza's and Dark and Cannonball. So this isn't a card called Urza's Dark Cannonball. This is just those three name stickers. Why they couldn't, like, cut the border, whatever. Uh, then we get the art stickers. So it would be, like, Hat, Squirrel, and, uh, I don't know, Doll. Then the ability stickers would be Exalted, Exalted, which is exactly what it sounds like. It triggers twice. Um, and then Shadow. Shadow is basically like fear or intimidate or whatever it was back in the day. Uh, this creature can block or, or be blocked only by creatures with shadow. So it is like tactical. It's a glorified counter. I mean, they didn't get too silly with this. You're not sticking the stickers on your face and you become a player yet. I mean, I will say this is pretty silly. They also have a 1, 5, and a 7, 4. But then I think the stickers cost tickets or something. I'm not too familiar with how that works. I mean, I could read the whole thing, but this is just the spoilers, not the mechanics video. So watch for that in the near future, though. So anyway, next up, let's go with Animate Object. It's a four, or pardon me, five cost, I can read. Uh, blue Sorcery, Uncommon, you get seven, I assume that's tickets. Choose an inanimate object you own from outside the game and put a Power and Toughness sticker on it. You may also put a Name sticker, an Art sticker, and or an Ability sticker on it. Put it onto the battlefield as a creature. So you get to just assemble your own creature with whatever you want. I kind of like that. that, that is a bit silly. And so naturally, you know, this is of course an acorn card. So that means not legal in Vintage Legacy Commander, etc. But then there's Carnival Carnivore. I'll just point it out right now before I even read it. No acorn sticker. This is legal in all Eternal formats. I kid you not. So six cost, common black, four six, alien crab horror creature with death touch. But also, whenever Carnival Carnivore enters the battlefield, you get... I guess one ticket, then you may put a sticker on a non-land permanent you control, or you own. That actually is a really good distinction in case you stole their card. This is legal. Putting stickers on non-land permanents that you own is now part of the game and, and officially sanctioned in Vintage, Legacy, Popper, Commander, etc. What? Oh boy, when I look at those $30,000 vintage decks, I was just thinking, you know what they need? Stickers stuck to them. They're probably double-sleeved and you're going to put them on the... But still, what were they thinking? 
Boy, I wish I knew what went into... Oh, look, a direct quote from Mark Rosewater from uh, May 17th, 2022. Somebody basically asked, will any of these be in non-English? And the answer is no. So um, then he said, Unfinity has some unique printing challenges, and the change to half the set being Eternal happened too late in the process to alter it. The Eternal cards can be reprinted, though, so there is a chance of some of them getting into other languages then. Let's just focus in on... The change to half the set being eternal happened too late in the process. So they designed the whole set with stupid, silly, wacky, crazy, zany cards, and then Hasbro called them up, I assume, and said, hey, we need some durability on this. We need this to actually sell. Make half the cards legal. And they're like, make half the cards, silver-bordered, silly cards with silly mechanics, make half of them legal in eternal. And Hasbro was like, yes, also, comma, send money. That's how I imagine that went down, and I can't imagine anything else happened. So, sticking stickers on things is now in the game. You're welcome. Also, this is a popper card. Have fun with that. And you might be saying, Des, Des, calm down. Obviously, it doesn't have a foil stamp on the bottom indicating its legality because these cards are below rare. First of all, Assembled Ensemble. Uncommon. Acorn. Secondly, direct quote from Mark Rosewater. We have dubbed these acorn cards. If a card has an oval security stamp or no security stamp at lower rarities, it's legal in eternal formats. Parenthesis, which includes Commander Legacy and Vintage, end parenthesis, direct quote. Very unequivocal there, in case you were going to quibble about the unequivocal. An unequivocality. So next up, we got a Mythic, Far Out. It's a three-cost white enchantment. It is an acorn card, even though it's really cool, and I would love to have this in Commander. Rather than choose the indicated number of modes for spells and abilities you control, you may choose one or more modes, but you can't choose any mode more than once. So like Kolagon's Command, you could do all four. Any kind of charm, all four. That is insanely powerful. It's an appropriate card. They should have made this not Acorn. I don't know why this is Acorn and that last black card wasn't. I, I don't get it. That's just stupid. Next up, we've got Magar of the Magic Strings, or as I like to call it, and Grath in Drag. If that outfit gets any more flaming, they're just going to remove the black mana and let it be mono red. Anyway, it's a three cost black red 3 3 legendary creature Minotaur performer. And if you pay three, note the name of a target instant or sorcery card in your graveyard and put it on the battlefield face down. It's a 3 3 creature with when this creature deals combat damage to a player, you may create a copy of the card with the noted name. I think copies go into your hand. I don't know, it's like an alchemy thing, and they called it something. It's weird. Uh, but then you may cast the copy, there you go, without paying its mana cost, and if this creature would leave the battlefield, exile it instead of putting it anywhere else. Yeah, I don't like spell recursion, but boy, a 3-3 three, three for 3 in dual color and you gotta pay 3 each time and have something in your graveyard and have it be worthwhile? It's no arcane bombardment, but boy, doesn't this look like, like a real card? And the answer is yes, because it is a regular hollow foil stamp, not an acorn, this is a real card. Kind of injects a little too much seriousness into it, if you ask me. I like absolute silly, wacky, zany stuff. I mean, some of the ones in the past, I think the last one had, like, high-fiving. You got to get up and high-five people. It's the one who has been left hanging or whatever. Uh, they did have that really cool, like, functional mechanic. Uh, I don't know what it was called, but it was, what was it, assemblies or whatever? That was pretty cool. Oh, contraptions. That's what it was. And that, like, could have been a real thing. And then briefly, they did make it a real thing. They made him legal in Commander. Just for an amount of time, because it honestly it didn't look like it was selling very well. It was basically selling for the cost of the lands in it. And they have had that horse leave the barn, go get a PhD, come back and die of old age at this point. The whole, ooh, fancy lands. They have been hitting that pinata so hard, it's not even made out of molecules anymore. They actually split it apart, caused nuclear fission, and blew themselves up. That's the state of, you know, the eighth secret lair with, you know, oh, ha, ha, funny basic lands. So they ruined that, so they had to do something, and that's why I think Hasbro called up and was like, make some of these cards legal, because we cannot ride the land train. Now that said, holy crap, do these lands look good. They also have, like, ultra-rare lands, and yeah, they're playing lottery with it. Okay, whatever, whatever gets the money. You don't need any of those cards to play the game. My beef is with the, the new Eternal cards that you do need to play the game. And some of them appearing to inject really stupid mechanics into the game. And to reiterate, Mark said, the whole half-legal thing is so late in the process, th they could not have pulled this off. This is going to piss off so many people. Anyway, the last one we got is Wicker Picker, and he's, he's on a claw machine using a claw. There's so, so many memes in this. Or, no, the other thing, um, dad jokes. Late 80s sight gigs? I, I don't know. 
Um, so it's an artifact creature for three scarecrow guests. It's a two, three and creature spells you cast have sticker kicker one. You may pay an additional one mana as you cast a creature spell. If you do, you get one ticket. Then you may put a sticker on it. Of course, pronoun reference confusion on it. I assume you're not putting the sticker on the ticket. And this also doesn't have an A core on the bottom. So sticker kicker will be officially in the game. So that's it for this batch. What do you think about this space carnival set? Let me know. Are you going to play it? Are you going to draft it? Or are you going to skip it? And uh, well, that's about it for now. I'll see you guys next time.